So for this problem, I'm given a force field, f of x, y, and a curve that starts at the point 1, 0, travels up to 1, 1, goes to 0, 1, and then goes down to 0, 0. And I would like to use Green's theorem to calculate the line integral of f, but I don't have a closed curve, right? It starts at 1, 0 and ends at 0, 0. So to facilitate this, part A asks to select a good closing curve, C2, that will make this line integral over a closed interval. So the easiest way to do it is to make a square. So I want to add in a section that goes from the point 0, 0 to 1, 0. And to do that, let's parameterize it. And I'm going to say that it is t, 0. And t can go between 0 and 1. So this yellow section is what I'm adding in. And I'm going to define it using the parameterization R2, and that's t0 between, for t between 0 and 1. So that's my answer for part A. And B asked me to calculate the line integral of f over that new curve I've chosen or added in using the definition of a line integral. So let's recall what that means. So the definition of a line integral tells me that the line integral of f over curve c is given by the integral from a to b of f of r of t dotted with r prime of t, where r of t is the parameterization of that curve where t goes between a and b. So here I can already fill in some things. I know my a and b, that's t between 0 and 1. And I'm given f, and I've, param I've made r right here. So let's go ahead and find f of r of t. That means plugging in a t everywhere I see an x and a 0 everywhere I see a y in f. So I've got a t plus b times 0, which is just 0, plus c. And then pt plus q times 0 plus r. So that's just pt plus r. OK. And then I want to dot this with r prime of t. So that means taking the partial derivative with respect to t of each component in r2. So r prime is going to be 1 comma 0. And let's go ahead and take this dot product. So remember the dot product is just a product of the i components of the two vectors plus the product of the j components of the two vectors. So I've got a t plus c times 1 plus 0 times p t plus r. So I've got the integral from 0 to 1 of a t plus c dt. Well, when I integrate a t, I'm going to get 1 half a t squared. And then c is like a constant, so when I integrate, I'm going to get c t. And let's evaluate this from t equals 0 to t equals 1. So plug in a 1 everywhere I see a t. And then plug in a 0 everywhere I see a t, which isn't going to give me much because both of my terms are going to be 0. So I get that my line integral equals 1 half a plus c. Let's move on to part C. And that asks me to use Green's theorem to calculate the line integral of f over c1 and c2. 
So now that I've got a closed curve, I can go ahead and use green serum. And let's recall the green serum is trudinum is the integral over the area that our curve encloses of the two-dimensional curl of our force field. So let me rewrite my force field. Okay, so to find the two-dimensional curl, I want to take the partial derivative with respect to x of the second component of the vector and then subtract the partial derivative with respect to y of the first component. So let's go ahead and calculate this. For the first term, I have the partial derivative with respect to x of px plus qy plus r. Well, qy plus r are going to be treated like constants, so when I take the derivative, they're going to go to 0. Then the derivative of px is just going to be p. And then likewise, for the second term, ax and c are constants, so when I take the derivative, they're going to drop out. And then the partial derivative with respect to y of by is b. So my two-dimensional curl is just p minus b. So that's pretty easy. Now I want to take the double integral of this over our area. So let's recall that when we added c1 and c2 together, they made a square where x and y both go between 0 and 1. So those are going to be my bounds of integration. But p minus b is just a constant, so I could just multiply this by the area of that square, which is just going to be 1. So the line integral of f around c1 and c2 is just p minus b. And then part d asks me to use my answers from b and c to calculate the line integral over c1 of f, which is what we've been trying to get from the beginning. And what we found in C is really going to help us out. So this answer in C is equal to the line integral of f around C1 plus the line integral of f around C2. Let me go ahead and write it out. And I have two of these components already. I just found out that the line integral over c1 plus c2 is p minus b. The line integral over c1 is what I'm looking for. And then in part b, I found that the line integral over c2 is 1 half a plus c. Now I can just solve this equation for the integral of f over c1. So I get p minus b minus 1 half a minus c. And that's my answer.